Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Well, what a wonderful backdrop with the park and the gazebo and the history, 1683, and then looking out on the bay, and, the, and I guess the Arthur Kill, too. It's beautiful. It really is. I love it. I love being on the waterfront in Perth, Amboy. Mayor. It's wonderful. So I want to thank um, I want to thank uh, Perth, Amboy Mayor Herman Kaba and also uh, our speaker from the Assembly, uh, Craig Coughlin, in, in particular for uh, for being here. Um, and they're both going to speak. And then we have a number of advocates uh, from various environmental and uh, citizen action groups that will also speak uh, about what's happening today. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, I always am happy that I can come back and say that uh, that uh, Washington and particularly the Democrats in Washington are responding to what I would say real needs in New Jersey to, in this case, to improve uh, the water infrastructure and really to make sure that you can trust the water that you drink, right? That's what this is all about, trying to, you know, it should be that when you turn on the tap, you don't have to worry. Uh, that it's contaminated or it's not clean or you can't trust the water. Um, and that's what this is all about, trying to bring money um, and action back from Washington uh, that helps uh, in that regard. And, and I did want to mention, really there's two things here that we're uh, concentrating on today. One is PFAS, which, is, which are these forever chemicals that get into the water system and we don't know exactly what their health impacts are, but we know they're not good. Uh, and then the other one is lead, which we do know historically that lead contamination can really have a, a, a major negative impact on people and particularly, uh, particularly young, uh, young kids. And we did have a little bit of a scare because here in Middlesex County, uh, I guess it was in October or November, there was you know, a little bit of a shock because there were about 300 households that were notified uh, that they had elevated levels of PFAS in their drinking water. Now, my understanding is that has been corrected, at least temporarily, so it's no longer a threat uh, because of what the utility did. But it was an indication uh, about why we have to take action, and that's why I mentioned it today. And, uh, you know, I, I, one of the reasons I'm proud of, to have Speaker Coughlin here is there's been so many things that he's been involved with that were so positive over the you know, in the past, but, and will be in the future. But uh, New Jersey is one of the only states in the country to even have a PFAS standard. There is no federal PFAS standard, um, which is important because then it means that, you know, we know, utility knows what action to take. If you don't have a standard, then how do you even decide, you know, what you're going to do? And so it's to his credit, to Speaker Coughlin's credit, and to our state's credit, uh, that, um, that we have a standard, one of the few states that actually does. Um, and it's because of that PFAS standard that the Middlesex County utility had to notify um, those households. That was the reason. And so, you know, I always feel, what is it, as Senator Lautenberg used to talk about the right to know, that how it was important for people to know what's going on, and that's a good example of that. But anyway, drinking water falls under the jurisdiction of the Energy and, and Commerce Committee, which is the committee in the House that I, that I chair, and I've been working for a long time to try to do more uh, to, uh, to get lead out of the water system, to get it out of the pipes, and to address PFAS. And so basically, uh, there are three things that are happening in Washington. Two have already happened. One we're hoping in the next few weeks. Uh, one was uh, the, what we call the Omnibus Appropriations Bill at the end of last year, which addressed some of these issues. The second was what we call the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, which the President signed into law a few weeks ago, which provides funding to correct a lot of these problems. And then the last one, which was passed in the House, and we're hoping in January, maybe sooner, but more likely in January, will pass the Senate, and that's the, uh, the, the Build Back Better Act that also adds additional funding. But I'm going to talk about each of those, but I did want you to know, um, know that. So in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which is already signed into law, there was a historic $10 billion investment in PFAS eradication. $4 billion is going to the Drinking Water State Revolving Loan Fund. That's the state funds. And then um, there's also federal assistance to privately owned community water systems, so, you know, such as nonprofits for drinking water infrastructure to address PFAS. And then that bill also invests another $5 million, particularly to assist underserved, small, and disadvantaged communities for financing uh, with regard to correcting PFAS. And uh, Perth Amboy is, is a town that would qualify. 
And lastly, there is an additional billion that goes into the Clean Water State Revolving Fund to help clean up non-drinking water systems, such as you know creeks, streams, and other bodies of water that are home to New Jersey wildlife. So, you know, we, we, we obviously we're looking at the beautiful uh, watershed in Raritan Bay. We want to keep that free of contaminants. So, um, Mayor, I, I, rem I, I wanted to say that I remember coming to uh, Perth Amboy a few years ago. I think it says here it was 2016. We, we held an event uh, where they, Perth Amboy was then, I think was spending about $2 billion dollars to remove lead pipes. I forget where it was, but it wasn't far from here. And uh, that was money that came from the federal government as well, but this would be a lot more. So, you know, Perth Amboy is a city, uh, witness that we had to do the correction. A lot of the older cities, Perth Amboy, Newark, New Brunswick, um, have these lead pipes that just need to be replaced because they do, they have, you know, the potential for lead contamination. And so I wanted to also mention today that in the bipartisan infrastructure bill, uh, there's $15 billion for states to remove uh, lead uh, service lines. And we're hoping uh, that it, when the Build Back, Build Back Better Act passes, which is the last bill, I mentioned that the House, we put an additional $10 billion to remove uh, lead service lines. Um, this is a particular reason why I wanted to come here today, because I do remember a few years ago when you were already starting to do that uh, here uh, in Perth Amboy. Um, let me just mention a few other things, though. Uh, New Jersey has already been promised $168 million from the EPA to address PFAS lead service line replacement. So that money's already been announced as far as our state is concerned. Um, and yesterday, uh, the president announced a uh, what he called the Lead Pipe and Paint Action Plan. So what that is is a series of rules, a regulatory it's a regulatory plan that the president and the vice president put together, they announced yesterday, that's going to make, uh, allow, like in other words, a good example of this, Mayor, would be that if, let's just, just uh, say that you decide or you know that you want to replace a certain amount of the lead uh, pipes, right? Um, they would give you technical assistance and give you money to actually put together the plan to do that because that can become costly in itself before you even get the money to remove it, which is, gonna, which is in this bill that we would also have the federal government help you put together a plan, for example, if you decided to do that. So I wanted to mention that. And then the last thing uh, I did want to mention, too, is that um, part of what we're trying to do also is to assist people pay their water bills, um, which was a different, which was difficult during COVID and continues because, you know, unfortunately COVID hasn't ended. So last year at that end of the year omnibus appropriations bill, and this came directly out of our committee, was something that I spearheaded. We created a $638 million program called the Low Income Household Drinking Water and Wastewater Emergency Assistance Program. And that was like LIHEAP. Um, the uh, the LIHEAP program that has existed for a number of years allows low income people to get help paying their utility bills. Like, I mean, not their utility, their, their heating bills, right? So this was a program that allows, uh, helps them pay for their water bill. And in the Build Back Better Act, that's already in place, but in the Build Back Better Act, which, you know, the House passed and we're hoping the, pre you know, the Senate passes soon, uh, there's a continuation with another, another $225 million to assist low-income households uh, to continue to pay, help pay for their water bills. In other words, until this time, we never actually had a program to help pay for water bills. It was for heating assistance, but not for water bills. So there's a lot going on, but again, it goes back to the same thing. We want to be able, you know, this issue of affordability. People have to be able to afford to live here, to you know, whether it's uh, whether it's a water bill, their heating bill, and at the same time, make sure that when they're drinking the water, that it's safe to drink and it's not contaminated. So it's all good. And with that, I'd like to now uh, ask the mayor to come up, and then we'll have the speaker and some of the environmental groups. Thank you, Helen. Good morning, everyone. As proud mayor of the city of Perth Amboy, I want to welcome each and every one of you to our beautiful city of Perth Amboy. I also want to recognize um, Iris Rodriguez, uh, representing Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez. I want to recognize Councilman B.J. Torres here. And I want to thank Congressman Pallone for hosting this press conference right here in this city. 
The Perth and Boy Water Sewer Utility is subcontracted to Utility Service Affiliates, a subsidiary of Middlesex Water, who provide the day-to-day -day operations of the city's Runyon watershed and its combined sanitary storm sewers. The treatment plant is located in Old Bridge Township and pumps its own water. While Perth and Boy is currently below the EPA and DEP standard for PF, PFAS, and recent results show our water quality is in compliance. Our equipment is antiquated and can be modernized to obtain better water quality. Water is our most important natural resource. Our current priority list to safeguard this natural resource is listed in our water waste capital program, which will one, reduce disinfection byproducts and produce better chlorine residues. Two, establish contingencies so water supply continues during outages and emergencies. And three, improve the overall quality of water for all users. With Perth and Board's allocation under this bill, the city will be able to begin our key projects, which is the removal of the contaminants in the raw water with the improvement booster pumps. An allocation of $2 million will begin this project. An additional $4 million will complete this project. I stress once again, that Perth and Boy is currently below the EPA and DEP standard for PFAS and water quality is in compliance. However, our equipment, once again, is antiquated and can be modernized to obtain better water quality. This aid will assist in improving the aging infrastructure and equipment. I want to once again personally thank Congressman Cologne for his advocacy for the entire state of New Jersey and especially for Perth Danboy. Thank you. I also want to add that we look forward to continue the support to modernize obsolete water equipment to our treatment facility in order to ensure the city continues to maintain the high quality water standard that our residents expect and deserve. So to safe and readily available water is so important to us and it's my priority to continually improve our water supply and also to help keep our compliance for many years to come. And once again, I want to thank you, Congress Congressman Pallone, because um, everything you stated is on point per damn boy just like the other underserved um, communities do deserve the help that we need to ensure that our water supply continues to improve. So, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I really appreciate the way you explained how, you know, this federal dollars could make a difference in terms of what you're doing. Because a lot of times I worry that, you know, we do these things in Washington or even on the state level and people don't know how it translates. So that's really helpful to explain that. Thank you, Mayor. Now we were so fortunate to have our, our own uh, uh, state assemblyman who's also the speaker of the New Jersey Assembly and was just recently uh, uh, re-elected as the speaker and all the things that, that he does to help here and throughout Middlesex County and the state, Craig Kaufman. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you for that incredibly kind uh, introduction, and it's a privilege, uh, a privilege to represent the 19th Legislative District in Perth Amboy, and, 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 and a privilege to be the speaker as well, and a privilege to be here with all of you today. Uh, on behalf of myself, my colleagues, Assemblyman, Assemblywoman Yvonne Lopez and Senator Vitali, both of whom send their regards, but neither of whom could be with us this morning. Um, and to thank you, uh, Congressman, for your great leadership on this. This is a, a step forward, it, one that's been a, a bit of a journey. I remember, I think it was a couple of years ago, the first time I, I didn't know what a PFAS was. 
uh, until we had a meeting in South Amboy. I remember being at, at the city hall uh, and talking about it. And I went home sometime after that and watched a movie called Dark Water, I think it is, Mark Ruffles. So if you want something to scare the hell out of you, go, go watch that. Uh, and, it, and it talked about when they first, I guess, came to understand the, the real detrimental effect of that on, on people and, and, and animals. It, it started by, by a, a field and, and cattle were dying. But uh, it is really, truly one of those things that we, you look at and you say, we need to address this. But as with so many other things, Congressman Pallone is way ahead of the curve. And uh, he was there years ago talking about this. And, and so now we've come uh, to take a real full step forward. We, we've known, as you point out, Congressman, that, that lead in our water is, is, a, is a real challenge. It's something that we need to remediate. Uh, it's something that has, affects the well-being of our, our families and communities. Um, and so uh, w today is a really big deal. And $168 million is real money. Uh, even by federal standards, it's real money. Um, and it means a lot, as, as the mayor, as you're right, so, so eloquently captured the, the use that it's going to put to effect right here in Perth Amboy and communities throughout the state. Um, you know, $168 million will help us bring cleaner, safer drinking water, and, and that is just remarkable because it, it makes our communities more prosperous, it makes us all safer, um, it lets us all uh, turn on the tap. You know, one of the things that we take for granted is so many things that we actually take for granted, right? We, we go, go to a gas station and you find out a gallon of gas is a gallon of gas because somebody checked it, somebody from the government made sure that they checked. Um, and here too, uh, we all expect that water that we turn on uh, from the tap to be clean and drinkable. Drinkable. Uh, it is one of the great things about uh, this great country. And, uh, and as you point out, Middlesex Water had the, the, the rates, of the, the standards had been raised, uh, and so there were less parts uh, allowed. Uh, but they've addressed that, and I think they be, need to be commended for changing out the, the plant. They took a colossal step in, in terms of doing that. Um, and so, uh, you know, this will help us all. We committed in the legislature uh, to eliminate lead pipes over the course of 10 years. Uh, and as part of a 2008 uh, Securing Our Children's Future Bond Act, we included $100 million for K through 12 districts to remove and replace lead pipes and fixtures throughout the school. And now we'll have to put together the, the, all of those commitments and, and utilize the money that's coming from Washington uh, to help us. I, I also would be remiss if we didn't note the incredible work that was done by our congressional delegation. You know, all too often, New Jersey didn't get its fair share, but with uh, Congressman Pallone holding such an important committee with all of our, our, uh, our, our leaders, uh, our congresspeople, and uh, of course our two fine senators, and New Jersey really got their share of this. And that's a tribute to you and to recognizing what really matters in communities, and a tribute and, and, a, and a great thank you to President Biden for his commitment to New Jersey uh, and to addressing something that is really uh, at the essence of what we need to do as a community. We have we want to be a great state. We have to do a bunch of things, I think. One of them is we have to feed people. We have to make sure they have a place to live. We have to have some level of health care for them and give them opportunities, and then let them take for granted the things like clean drinking water. And today we take a big step forward on that. So uh, we're all better off because of a bill like this. I know it was an incredible amount of hard work, uh, So, but thanks for putting that work in and thanks for getting it done and getting it over the top because today New Jersey's in a better position because of that. And so uh, we, we'll continue to, to work to make sure that we all can rely on our drinking water. It is essential to the success of this state. Uh, and thank you, Congressman Pallone, for your great work in making sure we make that happen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We always appreciate all the work that you do. Um, I'm now going to go to uh, the various advocates from environmental and citizen groups. Um, the first one I have down here is Marcus Sibley from the New Jersey NAACP and the National Wildlife Federation. That's an interesting combination because one of the things that I've been, you know, I, I'm always told, just so you know, when you have a press conference, just don't just talk about the wildlife and the seals and the polar bears and, you know, the, you have to talk about how things directly impact people in their pocketbook or in their quality of life, which is what we're doing today. But we don't want to forget about the uh, wildlife either, so thank you. <laughs> Uh, good morning, everyone. Again, Marcus Sibley, National Wildlife Federation, as well as the New Jersey State Conference 
NAACP. And I'm, I'm very excited to be here amongst so many um, community champions who understand how important this moment is. I just want everyone to take a second. I just want everyone to take a really quick second. I want you to imagine what the impacts on mental health for mothers is when their child is born with low birth weight. I want you to think about the father who works every single day to do the best that he can, but his child has asthma and is missing school. I want you to think about the parents who put every single dime and, and every single effort of their energy and their being into providing for their child, but their child has neurological disorders. So I want you then to think about what it must feel like when forever you've been told that you're responsible for that. Forever you've been told that something you're not doing correctly is the reason why you have those issues and your child has those issues. So today we know everything that I mentioned has a connection to pollution, air pollution, lead in water, PFAS, all these things that are inside the things that we're supposed to have naturally, water and air. These things are corrupted and it's impacting certain communities disproportionately and we forever had to deal with the guilt and the shame of thinking that we were responsible when it had nothing to do with us all along. So now since we are realizing that those health reasons that we've been blamed for are due to pollution, um, like I said, the quality of the air we breathe, the purity of the water we drink are results of the places we live all because of who we are. And it is what it is. We don't want sympathy. We don't need your guilt. What we need is your assistance to, to right these irrefutable wrongs. Let me say that again. We don't need your sympathy. We don't need your guilt. We need you to get in here and help us to fix these problems that have been caused because of racism, because of white supremacy. We are in Perth and Perth Amboy, New Jersey right now, one of the most significant slave trading ports along the Northeast, right here. This is where we are. This is the history. So when you take slavery, then you take Jim Crow, then you take redlining, then you take segregation, then you take lynching, then you take environmental injustices. Many communities have, haven't had a chance to build. There was never a chance to build. So we see the Build Back Better Act as an opportunity to finally have an opportunity to build in this country. New Jersey has one of the worst racial wealth gap issues in the country because certain communities didn't have a chance to build. So we are very excited about the Build Back Better Act as well as the infrastructure bill. We, we absolutely appreciate Congressman Pallone for all the work that you're doing. Um, we have made many strides, but there's much, much, much more work to do. And we want people to understand that something has been done incorrectly. We are making baby steps to fix an issue, but there is no touchdown for a long time. There's no time to celebrate. We can acknowledge these small victories, but we have to keep pushing. And in order to get there, it's gonna take everybody who's out here today and everyone who's tuning in because this can't be fixed with a few people. So I'd like to thank you very much for this time on behalf of the National Wildlife Federation and the New Jersey State Conference NAACP. Thank you so much. Next, we have Gary Brune, who's with New Jersey Future. Or he's, is he? He's here. Yeah, good conversation. And thank you for the invitation to speak today. Um, in particular, thank you to the Congressman Pallone. Uh, leadership on this issue has been a long time in coming, and it's a pretty rare feat that we get this kind of federal money uh, for this kind of thing, probably back, back to the 19, late 1980s, the last time. So two issues that affect Perth Amboy particularly, CSOs, combined sewer overflow, and lead in drinking water, lead replacement, replacement of lead service lines. Two things that once you're done, you, are, you have them in your rear, rear view mirror. It's a pretty rare occasion to do that in public, uh, in public issues, and we have a chance to do it with the help of uh, Congressman Paul here. For those who are not familiar with New Jersey Future, it's a nonpartisan by um, uh, nonprofit based in Trenton since the 1980s working on strengthening communities. There's really four things that uh, sort of characterize a strong community. The leadership, the kind of leadership you see from Congressman Pallone, Mayor Cobham, Speaker Coughlin, 
is essential safety, public health, and, um, and, and crime, proper planning. But then it's your infrastructure. You're not going to find too many cities that are strong and vital with uh, poor water and uh, sewer systems and road systems. Uh, those investments are vital for any city to sustain itself and to achieve its potential. So in a minute, you're going to hear from um, Andy Cricken here from uh, Jersey Waterworks. Jersey Waterworks, which is a, uh, a collaborative, 600 people across the state of New Jersey, water officials, uh, community organizations, um, basically have been looking at all of the issues that Congressman Quan has tackled, and um, including water affordability and emerging contaminants and PFAS. And two reports recently came out. Um, they're on their online website. One of both of which about lead service lines. So I just want to take uh, take a little bit of time to talk about this. Um, and one laid out a solution, a, a statewide plan for a lead service line, much of which was implemented by Newark. Newark removed its lead service lines in a little over two years, which is really remarkable. Um, and so part of the story is how do you get the funding? Part of it is how you go about it. Um, and we would encourage you to consider that. Some other issues about lead service replacement. Um, about a $2 billion problem across the state. We project that through the Congressman's efforts and Congress's efforts on the, the, um, the bipartisan infrastructure plan, Maybe about 10% of that might come to New Jersey over the next five years. So obviously we have a ways to go. It uh, reinforces why the Build Back Better Act is important to pursue. Um, the other thing is that um, we can fight for a more equitable distribution of that money. Right now it's being handed out by, by uh, virtue of how the money comes for water and wastewater projects, about 2% comes to New Jersey. New Jersey might have, might be the fifth highest state in the country for lead service lines, just surely because of the age of the housing. It's a function of the age of the housing. So if you do the math on that, um, we should be arguing for a much larger set, a uh, piece of the, of the funds over time. It would be more, much more equitable. A couple of things, other things that are buried in the bill that you may not know about that are really important. Uh, there's no customer cost share for the customer side of the line, which is really important for cities like Perth Amboy and Trenton and Newark. People don't have one or $2,000 to uh, contribute to this. And, and, and frankly, protecting your family shouldn't be a function of how much money you happen to have. <clears throat> it's too important for that. Um, other things that are in the bill, uh, environmental justice type issues, uh, nearly half of it is what's called principal forgiveness, sort of like getting a grant instead of a loan. For, um, for EJ, uh, environmental justice communities like Perth Amboy. And there's no state or local match, which is really important because uh, you're trying to maximize the use of this funding. So lastly, let me just say, communities like Perth Amboy can't do this alone. They, they face multiple challenges, and it's high time that the federal government got back in the game, and, and congratulations, uh, uh, Congressman Pullen, for pulling that off. And, um, and so thank you uh, and, and, uh, for, for having us here today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for pointing out the practical aspects of this. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but you know, yesterday I was on the phone with uh, Mitch Landrieu, who President Biden has appointed to implement the uh, the infrastructure bill. And I said to him, and I know many have said to him that, you know, I represent small towns. You know, we don't have cities the size of of Newark and or New York City, for that matter. In my um, congressional district, all the towns are, you know, some are big like Edison and a township with 100 or Woodbridge, but a lot of the cities like Perth, Amboy, you know, 40, 50,000, New Brunswick, and, um, or even smaller, Asbury Park. And, um, and, and they need help. In other words, you can't just expect that they're going to apply for these grants because they don't have a grant writer necessarily who can do that. And so we have made the point, Mayor, to, uh, to the Biden administration that in distributing this money, you really got to keep in mind that we have a lot of small towns that may not have, you know, some consultant that's going to write all these grants and everything, and that please try to help uh, with assistance to the towns when they're trying to seek this money, which is important. Uh, next, we have uh, Andy Kreikin, I guess, with New Jersey Border Works. Andy, come on up. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman Pallone, and uh, my name is Andy Cricken, and I'm uh, the co-chair of the Jersey Waterworks Initiative and also a member of the New Jersey Environmental, Adjust uh, Advisory, Environmental Justice Advisory Council and also a member of the National Environmental Justice Advisory Council. And I would first like to give heartfelt thanks to Congressman Pallone and the entire New Jersey congressional delegation, our, our representatives and senators, 
uh, who voted for the infrastructure bill. Um, this is a once in a generational opportunity for water infrastructure at an affordable rate. So heartfelt thanks to you um, from on behalf of Jersey Waterworks, behalf of everyone who believes in environmental justice and to everyone in the congressional delegation. Also thanks to Speaker Coughlin for his long time work and Mayor Kaba for his work in, in protecting uh, waterways uh, and, and public health. Jersey Waterworks is committed to uh, safe drinking water and clean waterways for everyone, no matter what you look like or where you live or how much you make, at an affordable rate. And that is why this bill is such a big deal, because it will enable, by getting federal funding in, it will enable an acceleration of initiatives that will reduce combined sewage flooding, reduce combined sewage overflows into bays like the Raritan Bay, protect uh, safe drinking water from lead, lead service lines and, and PFAS, and also, uh, as Mayor Cobb has said, take care of aging infrastructure that has long passed its useful life, but do it at an affordable rate. Um, you know, Jersey Waterworks worked recently with Mayor Kaba and with his staff, and I want to shout out to Joel Rosa, who worked so hard on this, to reduce the cost of Perth Amboy's combined sewer plan by quite a bit of money, almost $90 million, and yet it is still very expensive. This federal funding will make a huge difference for Perth Amboy, and again, enable it to accelerate the infrastructure plan, but it would also without rate uh, impact, reduce the rate impact for the residents. And that's the key. Um, like uh, Marcus was saying earlier, it, it's important that everyone's entitled to safe drinking water and clean waterways at an affordable rate, and certainly not have to worry about uh, you know, having their water shut up because they can't afford to pay the rate. So these, this Federal Infrastructure Act will protect our environment, uh, protect the public health, and do it in a way that, that doesn't sink the ship of low-income households. So again, heartfelt thanks to the congressman, to everyone in the New Jersey delegation who has supported this, and uh, also to environmentalists and, and community service advocates that are pushing for this. This is a big step in the right direction. As has been said, there is more to go. There's, this will not solve the entire infrastructure gap, but it is a big first step, and the first in over 30 years. So we're really grateful and looking forward to getting to work to protect our waterways and our public health. Thanks for the opportunity. So next is Yvette Jordan with Lead Free New Jersey. Okay, thank you. I'll try to not bore you and be quick, as I was informed I should do. Um, I want to share an anecdote with you first, though. Um, very, very brief. Yesterday I was in Washington, D.C. for an event with our vice president, um, President Harris about water and I was in the ladies room and I'm washing my hands and and I finish and I look up and who comes out of the stall Radhika Fox so um, I said hello administrator assistant administrator Fox my name is Eva I know who you are you're Yvette Jordan from New Jersey so I'm thinking, how does she she know me? So you've you've done a lot, and you're an activist, and I know your name is out there. And so I'm walking out. Oh, wait a minute! I want you to meet so and so and so and so. I'm like, oh my goodness, this never happens, right? So um, I met a lot of people, and I said, um, thank you for what you're doing, and the Biden administration is doing so much and she she said well your congressional um well delegation has really really pushed you're getting over 150 million dollars so i know it's over 168 still i'm saying how does she remember that she has 50 states right so who remembers all of that it's just it was a wonderful experience and i was happy about that so my name is Yvette Jordan. First, I am an educator first. I'm a history teacher in Newark. And I'm also co-chair of the advocacy committee of Lead Free New Jersey. Lead Free New Jersey, of course, is an organization that really seeks to um, focus on holistic lead remediation. And that's um, really, really clear and important as, as everybody has already explained. In addition, equitable and I think that is what Marcus earlier was alluding to equitable policy change and of course empowering all communities I just want to say how impressed I am 
by you, Representative, in leading us and serving as a leader in this effort. And the Infrastructure Now Act is important, and we need safe, safe water, of course. However, we are not done. And I think all of us acknowledge that. So, so by supporting and still exerting some, some pressure where it's needed so that the Build um, Back or Better Act is really supportive and pushed through our Senate is critical. I thank you. Of course, I'm telling everybody to be quick, but I can't help myself because when you mention the vice president, the first time I went into her office, we had a meeting and we were talking about another uh, aspect of this uh, legislation that deals with broadband and underserved areas for broadband. We'll maybe talk about that another day. But after the meeting was over, she said to me, oh, you're not leaving yet because I want you to come over and meet the second gentleman, her husband. And I went into his office. I did not realize until somebody had kind of suggested to me, but I didn't know for sure, that he grew up in Old Bridge. Of course, it was the, he said it was Matawan, which I also represent, but it was actually the Matawan section or post office of Old Bridge. And then he went on and on about, you know, I think it was at, I think at the high, high school or middle school uh, that he was at. Um, and, um, and then I had my assistant with me, who doesn't work with me anymore, one of my staff guys, and he looked at him and he said, gee, you look awful familiar. And it turned out that his father was, his, was a very good friend of his uh, in Old Bridge where he grew up. And so it was like, you know, the New Jersey connection was just unbelievable, right? Anyway, you want to hear all this, but you made me think of it. So um, anyway, so next we have Meredith Kami, who's with the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper. Thank you, Congressman, and thank you for allowing me to be part of this event on this beautiful day here um, along the Bay Shore. Um, I am from Manawan, so we're very proud, actually, that the uh, second husband is, is from our town. Um, so I'm Meredith Comey. I'm the Restoration Program Director for New York, New Jersey Baykeeper. Baykeeper has spent 30 years suing polluters and fighting hard for clean water for all communities within the New York, New Jersey Harbor Estuary, which is the most densely populated and one of the most industrial regions in the world. We strongly support the Build Back Better Act and all the change that it will bring, including uh, coastal protection, changes in infrastructure, drinking water changes, um, as well as policy uh, initiatives. We thank Congressman Pallone and the bipartisan representatives who support the allocation of the $9 billion that will be going to the cleanup of PFAS from our drinking water, particularly in disadvantaged communities. Safe drinking water should not be an issue that our colleagues in Newark, Perth Amboy, and all underserved communities must fight for. The Build Back Better Act also provides $1 billion for the cleanup of streams, rivers, and waterways in this region, which will ensure safe recreation and healthy communities for our children and families. Again, something all deserve and shouldn't have to fight so hard for. Thank you again, Congressman, for your leadership. Uh, thank you to all our colleagues here today for your great advocacy. And I look forward to working with everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, now we have Ed Portasnik, New Jersey Lead of Conservation Voters, does such a great job. Thank you, Congressman. It's interesting to be called an advocate because we have two, well, many great advocates that are helping bring investments back to New Jersey that are much needed. But um, we've heard it a time and again. It doesn't uh, mean we shouldn't say it again. Congressman Pallone, Chairman, you have done a fantastic job representing New Jersey's interests um, and interests across America to invest in our infrastructure. And today we're talking about clean drinking water but the, you know, really runs the gamut on environmental issues and other issues that help our families and businesses succeed. Um, we have a speaker who happens to be right from here, Speaker Coughlin, who is working, you know, in our New Jersey Assembly and with the legislature to deliver similarly for families, um, which is just critical. And the mayor and Assemblywoman, it's, it's just incredible. 
And um, at New Jersey LCV, we represent Democrats, Republicans, and independents who want us to move forward on clean drinking water, on protecting our open spaces and making parks available, and on clean air and combating climate change. And uh, the speaker has overseen uh, a legislative session most recently as the most productive in a decade, and they're rounding out probably another one that will beat that and best that, and that's just incredible. Um, a couple things just to note that are maybe a little unique to bears reminding. 95% of New Jersey's waterways are impaired according to federal standards for fishing and swimming. New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the nation. And we're scheduled to reach full build out by 2050. So in the span of a mortgage, if you open one today. That means every postage stamp of space will have a building on it. And land filters our water. And because we are the most densely populated state, um, you know, there's a phrase like water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink applied to the ocean because it was salty and bad for you. But because we're developing so much, our natural land is unavailable to do some of the filtering. So we depend on engineering and infrastructure to help with the toxic legacy and some of the overdevelopment or just development because that's what, you know, people need and businesses thrive on. Um, you know, we end up having to make more investments. And without the funding, because we're an older state, we'll be left behind because businesses and families need affordable water, they need reliable drinking water that's clean and not gonna be poisoning them, and they need it to be abundant. Otherwise, businesses aren't gonna come here. Pharmaceutical industry, manufacturing, they depend on reliable, affordable, clean drinking water. Our families depend on reliable, affordable, clean drinking water. And the bills that have been passed and shepherded by Congressman Pallone are going to do that, and in the state legislature as well. But, as we've heard, there is more to be done. The Build Back Better Act, we need to continue to make investments to turn back the tides of racism and environmental racism in particular. And all of us here are committed to doing that. But to take a small moment to pause and congratulate everybody for making progress and take a deep breath knowing that there's going to be improvements and then double down our efforts into 2022 to continue to deliver for the families and businesses. And that's what we're here to celebrate and a message to deliver today. And thank you to our great leaders and all of our advocates. We're with you. Thank you, Ed. So we have two more speakers and last is not least. So first is Angeli Ramos, who's the new executive director of the New Jersey Sierra Club. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today in this very lovely December day, <laughs> to our surprise. Um, thank you, Congressman Pallone, for this opportunity and for all the work that you're doing to protect our environment, not just our drinking water. Um, as the Congressman mentioned, the infrastructure bill will provide funds to help to clean our drinking water from lead and from PFAS. New Jersey has had a prevalent PFAS and lead problem. We are a little bit more familiar with lead than we are with PFAS just because of the historical issues that we've dealt with um, and how it affects the health of the citizens of New Jersey. But we don't know so much about PFAS. And so understanding that we're getting more money to clean our waters and also try to understand this contamination and help the citizens of New Jersey to get rid of this contamination is definitely a game changer. Um, as we all know, lead is incredibly harmful, especially towards children with developmental effects. Uh, PFAS, as I mentioned, is an emerging science, and so there needs to be a lot of research done to truly understand um, its effects, as Congr Congressman uh, mentioned. Um, we don't know so much about it, but what we do know is that PFAS has awful effects on our immune systems, as well as being a carcinogenic. Um, well, I was going to say a chemical, but in reality is a thousand chemicals, right? That's the, the PFAS family. So getting so much money, <laughs> because it is a lot of money, it's definitely a game changer for New Jersey. And um, I should have said, yes, my name is Angeli Ramos, new uh, director for New Jersey Sierra Club. And so I look forward to working with all of you, especially with you, Congressman, to help clean New Jersey. So thank you. Thank you. 
you, Angelia. And next, or last, uh, is uh, Amy Goldsmith with Clean Water Action. Uh, thank you, Congressman Pallone, and um, it's really a pleasure to be with, with everyone here who has done so much hard work um, in the State House, in Congress, and in communities. And um, my organization's founding director um, helped to write and pass the original Clean Water Act and Safe Drinking Water Act in 1972 and 1974. And, um, you know, the Clean Water Act actually calls for zero discharge into our waterways, and uh, then President Nixon actually signed it. So um, it's not really, uh, it's something that we not should, should not just aspire to, but to move forward to. And, and obviously this legislation and the funds that were here will help us get towards that. And the Safe Drinking Water Act calls for safe and affordable drinking water for all. In some cases for New Jersey, we're, we've been talking about those legacy pollution, like cleaning up those toxic hotspots here in the Raritan and elsewhere. But, uh, that are difficult, but we know that lead remediation is actually, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. It's really just about money. And so talking about solutions, um, the federal government and the work that Congressman Pallone has done has really um, found the simple solution. Give us the money to do what we need to do to make the remedies happen. Uh, we know just replace the line um, and fix it. Now PFAS, that's a lot more challenging. And um, I've gotten calls from people, um, a woman who is actually a board member of mine who has a grandson who has one kidney, lives in Ridgewood, very affluent community that has a big PFAS problem. <laughs> um, and they've tried to have remedies, but they're still in violation um, of their PFAS. And she's scared to death because PFAS affects kidneys. And her grandson has one. So... You know, you can be rich, you can be poor, but everybody gets sick. <laughs> and so we really need to take care of this problem in a, in a huge way. And so I really thank you for um, the policy that you've done, Congressman Pallone, but all the money that is needed to do the rights of the wrongs of the past. And we still have people polluting today that we need to um, stop them in their tracks. So as we do the good work that we do locally, uh, we're not having to clean up again 10 and 20 years after them. So thank you all. Thank you to all the advocates, to Speaker Coughlin for your amazing work um, and leadership and understanding that people um, need to be lifted up um, and uh, everybody deserves healthy air, water, no matter what the color of your skin is or what zip code you live in. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. That was a great conclusion in reminding us about how we have to always be vigilant and it's a never-ending battle as much as we are celebrating today what's happening. Um, any questions from anyone? Um, media or anybody have a question for us? All right. If not, I'm going to uh, conclude on this glorious day. It's just great to be out here and see everything and, and, enjoy, the, and enjoy the weather. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Speaker. And thank you for all our advocates for being here today. Great.